Hello and welcome back to MCOM Solutions. My name is Jake and today we are going to continue our conversation on mesh radios. Uh, of course, kind of the uh, genesis of this channel uh, started with my Ravenwood Acres channel. Uh, where I started talking about LoRa radios or Meshtastic, as a lot of people like to call it, and um, saw a lot of interest there. Therefore, I created this channel to kind of specifically talk emergency communication solutions. And uh, we will continue to talk about LoRa stuff here, uh, but we're exploring all Mesh right now and uh, other communication solutions in the future. But I'm looking at primarily mesh radios that are marketed for the unlicensed side of the spectrums so that they're easier for just the everyday citizen to go pick one up and use. I understand price point is a major factor. We'll discuss that about this radio that we're going to be talking about today. Past videos, if you haven't seen them, we've talked about the Beartooth Mark II, the Gotenna Pro X2, uh, yeah, Pro X2, and then today we're going to be talking about the Doodle Labs mesh writer or the, their wearable mesh writer radio. So let's take a look at that and we'll come back and we'll talk. All right, so you go to doodlelabs.com and then if you jump over their technical library, you're gonna find obviously a lot of information. I wanna note something about any company that provides you with this information. I believe it builds trust with consumers because you know there's a lot of gimmicky companies out there and whether it's radios or other tech that you know have these real flashy websites and big claims and tutorials and you know testaments of how amazing their tech is but no real data um, you, know, you should probably be cautious with companies like that uh, I've never owned any of Doodle Labs products but when I see this type of information, I, it builds some trust immediately. So I'll talk real quick on their current models of their Mesh Rider series of uh, radios. They have the Nano, um, which is more for like indoor application devices. Uh, and then the Mini, which interests me a little bit because that one is um, better for like outdoor devices and things like mounting in a, in a drone or on a drone uh, that provide the connect to your wearable radios and stream back high speed or high speed uh, HD video uh, along with providing an airborne relay right so and expanding your mesh network pretty cool as mentioned earlier though we are going to look at the 900 megahertz the unlicensed one here the 900 and 200 or 2.4 gigahertz one this is so we're going to click that go over to <clears throat> this page and this is going to cover very much everything you want to know and more users guys got some good information help kind of answer some questions about interface which we'll get to towards the end the data sheet is where we're going to go first though so data sheet go back up to the top because obviously i've been reading ahead uh, quick overview of the radio it's a you know multi-band wearable radio as mentioned use it utilizing the 950 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz frequency ranges uh, which are allowed to be used globally obviously check into that <laughs> depending on where you're at uh, and it can be connected via a Wi-Fi bridge to tablets smartphones on the network um, as far as the interface we'll dig into that a little bit there is I still have some questions even after reading all this information some other notable features is um, as mentioned streaming HD video uh, to your teammates 1k away that's pretty impressive um, and then it talks about that again kind of some of their key features or things they highlight is the long range field tested 100 kilometers i'm assuming that's point radio to radio no not like oh we went 100 or we created a mesh network at 100 kilometers and you know diameter or something but <clears throat> and then with a high throughput of up to 100 megabits per second i mean most people's internet's not even that fast i know throughout my life i've had a lot of internet it was way slower than that but and that's using their mesh rider um, waveform, right? And these are using exceptional multipath. Let's see if there's anything else that may stick out for the rest of us. Um, typical stuff with the you know resistance to jamming, detection, those type of things. Any mesh radio 
the mobile ad hoc network uh, capabilities kind of fall into that category, especially when you're talking these ones that are using low uh, output RF, like one watt. Uh, <clears throat> latency, super ultra low, liable, low latency for command and control, uh, which could be obviously for the more tactical application would be very important. Self-healing, self-forming, which is defined the definition or the underlying if it, you say it's a mesh radio, right, it's, it has that capability. Their encryption is 256 or 120 bit, 128 bit encryption. Uh, there's some restrictions there I'll talk about with uh, throughput. Uh, some of the additional features they, of course, talk about how it's lightweight. It can be integrated, the Ethernet, USB, or UR interfaces for easy integration in different systems and architectures, right? So those physical um, interfaces are uh, ideally for like if you're mounting this radio like in a vehicle or something. Uh, all right, let's go down the tech specs. It's a 2X Mio radio. You may be familiar with the term Mio, like as it refers to like Wi-Fi. Um, with, you know, has, uh, that's a model number with battery and internal GPS antennas. Um, tech library documents. Here's some of the throughput information that may interest some of you. 80 megabits per second on this channel, you know, 40, 20, and 12. Uh, so with the encryption, if you want um, full throughput, you know, you're going to reduce it down to the 128, as it mentions here, or if you want, uh, the 256, you're going to have to, you know, put up with the whole 12 megabits per second, but um, max throughput. Obviously, there's variables to that. You can see how they tested the data throughput at 10 meters with uh, three uh, three DBI uh, antenna indicatives or antennas indicative indicative. Ugh, man, um, frequencies already talked about. Software selectable, meaning. It's not physical, like there's not a, uh, a knob on the radio. You're going to have to be interfaced with the radio via the GUI interface. Uh, one watt max output. <clears throat> and there, yeah, let's get down here real quick where they talk about, uh, I'm going to have to do a little more research on this modulation, the auto adapting modulation code at scheming MCSO-15 or 0 to 15, I think is maybe what that means as yeah as indicated up here for the wattage uh yeah i'm not familiar with that one maybe that's more aligned with like some wi-fi uh, setups so i'm going to do a little more to, to learn myself and okay well this is all getting maybe let's go through like so radio management the web gui you know https um and it looks like i think you can integrate this with atac we'll look at the um, we'll look into that and I will probably do a future video if I can find that information about there. Um, there it is. Waterproof. I figured this is something people might be interested in. It is waterproof IP67. It's compliant with the, the mil spec standard 810H, uh, which is the high shock, high vibration existence, uh, resistance. So, you know, if it is mounted, you know, you can mount this thing to, a um, you know, ATV or something like that. Uh, and it's you know capable of handling that it just talks about the it's got a pretty high quality gps built in antenna the fcc information if you're interested is right here their id so you can go over to places like i've mentioned in previous videos the id uh fcc id dot io um and look up and see more information they have most of that information on their website so it's not 100 percent necessary the fcc that site i was talking about uh is more helpful when people are not being as transparent about the information <laughs> about what they're what they're developing or what they have developed so all right we're going to just wrap this up simple to the point so this capability that these radios offer it does come at, at a uh, hefty price you're talking full wearable radio with pretty much all the accessories they did send me kind of a roll up around two thousand dollars msrp now that price may change once they actually roll them out and distributors start buying them and stuff like that and selling them because that is the uh, msrp so you know a lot of times things sell for less than that but that is still probably outside a lot of people's radio budgets because you know you, you obviously need more than one uh, and if you have a whole team that's that's a lot uh so um 
but you have to ask yourself, is this a capability you're looking for or you just want? Is it a capability you absolutely need? Then maybe maybe these aren't the radio for you. And there's some other solutions out there like Beartooth Mark II don't offer you the high-speed video streaming capability, uh, but they offer you voice and pictures, which is a, you know something that you can't get with Laura. So that is something you need to ask yourself. And obviously the Beartooth ones are... Uh, more affordable than these. There's other radios out there in this market that we'll take a look at in the future. Uh, some are straight, like China manufactured ones coming from like places like AliExpress and stuff. So um, yeah, we'll take a look at those in future videos. If you're, you followed along this far, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll be continuing this conversation on mesh communications. Check out our links down below. Stay tuned for more videos.